Pick up your favorite object and start rotating it in a fixed direction. How many full rotations do you think you can make before your arm gets too twisted to continue? As you approach 360 degrees, it starts to feel a bit uncomfortable. And yet, if you push onwards, when you finish the second full rotation, your arm somehow goes back to where it started. A third rotation and you're all twisted up again. But a fourth rotation brings you back to square one. You can keep going like this, forever rotating your hand, and somehow the arm that connects your hand to your body will never become too tangled up. So is this a trick of human anatomy or could it be due to a more fundamental property of space itself? I'm Vijay, and this is the topology of movement, in which we'll answer this question by closely observing one of our physical senses. Not vision, hearing, touch, smell, or taste, but rather a sixth sense, known as spatial orientation. This physical sense has its very own intricate sense organ called the inner ear, which you could think of as a tiny gyroscope inside your head, which constantly monitors how your head is oriented in space as you go about your day. As our brains process this spatial orientation data, we're secretly traveling through orientation space, a three-dimensional space that is completely different from the Euclidean space we're used to thinking about. In fact, the shape or topology of orientation space is utterly bizarre with properties that initially sound downright impossible. And yet, we'll discover that our bodies already have a deep, visceral understanding of it. In fact, you don't need to know any topology to begin exploring it, as long as you're willing to move your body. In case that sounds intimidating, there's someone who can help. This is Bala, one of the simplest and nicest puppets you'll ever meet. With Bala's help, we'll solve a series of movement puzzles, which will lead us to a deeper understanding of the shape of space and the hidden topology that governs our movement within it. Bala has just three strings, but he can move in all kinds of ways. He can nod his head, yes. He can shake his head, no. And he can even say, maybe so. As Bala moves about in space, how many different physical states can he occupy? Well, he can change his position in space. But he can also change his spatial orientation while keeping his position fixed. So how many dimensions of spatial orientations are there? Or to put it another way, how many degrees of freedom does Bala have while keeping his center fixed? It turns out there are three. In the next video, we'll see exactly why there are three dimensions worth of spatial orientations. But first, there's more to learn from Bala now that he's no longer controlled by those strings. Let's think of the full set of Bala's orientations as orientation space. So this, 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 and this all represent different points in orientation space. And as Bala gradually shifts spatial orientation, he traces out a continuous path in orientation space. But this brings up a major question. How do we actually specify points in orientation space?
notice that we can travel through orientation space by rotating about the x, y, and z axes. So maybe x, y, and z rotations can uniquely identify points in orientation space. Kind of like how x, y, and z coordinates uniquely identify points in Euclidean space. No, not really. The analogy breaks down. Because rotations about the x, y, and z axes are not independent of each other. They're somehow entangled. Here's a puzzle. Can you find a way to achieve a 90 degree z rotation purely in terms of rotations about the x-axis and the y-axis? First, make your own model of Bala. Then, you can pause the video and try this out yourself. The fact that x rotations, y rotations, and z rotations are not independent operations is one important way that the shape of orientation space differs from the shape of Euclidean space. But it's far from the whole story. As we unravel the larger story in the upcoming videos, we'll see why the strange topology of orientation space is precisely what allows us to perform movements like this without getting tangled up. Now, when I first saw demonstrations like this one, which is sometimes known as the plate trick, I had this nagging doubt that maybe it was just something weird about the human arm. But then I discovered the string trick, which completely blew my mind. You can take any object of your choice, a shoe, a mug, or Bala himself, which you can then connect to various points around the room using a bunch of strings. How many strings? Well, three, four, five, 10, 187. It doesn't matter for this experiment. Now, if you rotate your object by 360 degrees, the strings will get pretty tangled up. In fact, you can try as hard as you like but it'll be impossible to untangle the strings and return them to their original state while keeping the object fixed in place. Okay, let's start afresh and add a few more strings just for fun. After rotating by the initial 360 degrees, what if you rotate your object by another 360 degrees in the same direction? In other words, performing a 720 degree rotation in total. <laughs> Common sense tells us that the strings will get even more horribly tangled up. And yet, shockingly, the opposite happens. They can now be untangled and returned to their original state, all while keeping the object totally fixed in place. Hard to believe? As a challenge, why don't you try it yourself? This opens up a whole bunch of questions. How is the string trick even possible? And what does it have to do with the larger shape of orientation space? Because orientation space is three-dimensional, we can't step back and see it from the outside. But we can experience it directly, using our sense of spatial orientation. In the upcoming videos, you're going to create your own model of Bala. And by directing your inherent sense of spatial orientation through your puppet, you'll solve a series of movement challenges, which capture what's happening at the heart of orientation space. In more mathematical terms, we'll practice performing loops in orientation space and enacting homotopies or gradual deformations of those loops in order to see why a 720 degree rotation loop is homotopic to a stationary loop.
In the later videos, we'll translate these discoveries into a symbolic algebraic form, known as the quaternion numbers. Using the quaternions, you can communicate spatial orientations to a computer, which is crucial if you want to animate a 3D character, or manipulate a camera, or control a robotic arm. Finally, we'll describe orientation space in other geometric ways, such as the matrix group SO3 and the real projective space RP3. The mini course is highly interactive and broken up into lots of short segments and activities, so you can really go at your own pace. And the entire series can be accessed through the interactive ebook linked in the description below. I feel like there's something new here for everyone, whether you're a game developer, a puppeteer, a seasoned mathematician, or just a person who's curious what it's like to inhabit a space very different from Euclidean space. And if you happen to be a teacher, I hope you'll find something in this approach that you can use in your own lessons. The series is free of charge and open to everyone, so feel free to dive right in. Thank you.